Today, I'm going to speak about something. And if you've been paying attention, it's something you've heard me say quite a few times. Not long after becoming a Lucchese member, I noticed something right from the onset. The honor and loyalty was missing, and they were replaced by greed. Yesterday, while I was online, I came across a New York Times article dated March 2nd, 1994, titled, Mafia Defector Says He Lost His Faith. The article was written based off an interview conducted by former investigative reporter for the New York Times, Selwyn Robb, and former Lucchese captain, Anthony Tumak Asatoro. At the time, Asatoro began cooperating following a 1993 racketeering conviction and while facing a 30-year sentence. According to Asatoro, the new generation that's running things threw all the old rules out the window. The key word is greed. All they care about is money, not honor. I wasn't surprised when I read Asatoro's words and noticed that they echoed some of the things that I myself been saying. When I say the words there was no honor, I don't mean that no one didn't carry themselves in an honorable way. Of course there were guys who did. Nevertheless, I am speaking about the majority of the guys I dealt with. Not long after being inducted, I was asked by Spanky, Big John's brother, and Johnny Sideburns to go with them to collect money owed to a construction material supplier. We all met with the guy at his office, and he explained the situation. I believe he was owed a little bit over 100000 That next morning, we went to the concrete company who owed him the money. I jumped out of the car and spoke to the owner's son and only asked when his father would be back. Within hours, that money was repaid. We were supposed to receive our cut in two payments, around twenty-five, thirty thousand. dollars I did receive the initial payment, but when I asked Cyburns about the second one, he told me a pure bullshit story that they found out the guy we were collecting the money for was wired. That guy happened to be friends, by the way, with Spanky. I remember saying something like, well, I guess we're getting pinched, but Cyburns didn't seem concerned. Presently, we're in the beginning of 2024. I asked the viewers, have you heard of Spanky and Cyburns getting pinched for extortion? The answer is no, because what they did is whack up my end. So when I speak about greed replacing honor, that's one of the many examples. And by the way, after they pulled that stunt, it was fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Never happened again. You have trolls, people who never stepped a foot in the street, nor were anywhere near that life, who will say, oh, he's only saying these things for revenge. I say these things because they're the truth, something that most people can't handle. And trust me, if it was revenge that I wanted, it wouldn't come in the form of words. The article went on to say that although several high-ranking mafia members defected, Asatoro was the first to be interviewed. Nevertheless, that interview was conducted in the presence of three members from the New Jersey Attorney General's office. I may get deeper into his story in a future video, but here's what he had to say in regard to his life. He said as a young man, he grew up in Orange and Newark, New Jersey, and was drawn to the mob due to the few opportunities of making money. During the 1950s and 60s, being accepted into the mafia was viewed as honorable and the respected thing. Keep in mind, the operative word is accepted, meaning that the mafia picks you. As I've stated before, you don't wake up one day and say I'm joining the mob. According to Asatoro, he dropped out of high school after only completing the sixth grade. In time, he became the leader of a street gang in Newark and acquired the nickname Tumac, which was the caveman hero in the movie 1 Million BC, and this was due to his street fighting capability. He caught the eye of Lucchese member Anthony Delasco, who recruited him for the loan shocking and gambling business. Delasco ran one of the largest number rackets in Newark. Asatoro added, I came up with the old mustaches, referring to the mustache peats. They didn't talk. You had to use your mind and street sense to figure things out. Whatever they told you was only on a need-to-know basis. As far as him referencing the old time as not talking, you had to literally interpret what their facial expressions or body language meant. And I experienced that dealing with the Sicilians, specifically Lorenzo Menino. I remember him giving a certain look or smile without saying a word. Due to the books being closed, Asatoro wasn't inducted into the Lucchese family until 1976. He said he was driven to a house in New York by fellow Lucchese member Michael Papadio, who the Lucchese's would wind up killing in May of 1989. Conducting the ceremony that day was the Lucchese boss Tony Dux Corallo. Asatoro described the ceremony by saying it was the greatest honor of my life, after which he was placed in a crew headed by Lucchese captain Joe Abate. 
Not long after his induction, Tony Ducks made him the captain of the Lucchese's Jersey faction, who, according to Asatoro, consisted of 20 members and more than 100 associates. And Michael Tassetta was his acting captain. He claimed back then the crew was disciplined and coordinated, but that law enforcement was not. By 1985, Asatoro, along with 19 other members and associates, were indicted in Newark on federal racketeering and narcotic charges. That case became one of the longest federal trials in U.S. history, lasting almost two years. One government tape entered into evidence, had a defendant saying, we own New Jersey. In August of 1988, all 20 defendants were acquitted, which was a monumental victory for the mob and a major loss and embarrassment for the government. In 1993, both Michael Tessetta and Michael Perna admitted to bribing a juror on that case during a plea. Strangely enough, during the interview, Asatoro refused to say if he'd known about the bribe. That same year, he would receive 20 months for his refusal to testify before the New Jersey Investigation Commission. According to Asatoro, trouble began to take shape that year as well. Vic Amuso would replace Tony Ducks following his being sentenced to life on the commission case. Vic and his newly appointed underboss, Gaspipe Castle, began curbing Asatoro's independence while demanding a much larger cut of the Jersey crew's earnings. At the time, they were sending 50000 to New York. According to Asatoro, Tony Ducks conversely only requested 10000 per year from the crew. He claims as a result of refusing to be shaken down, the Lucchese bosses took him down from his captain's position, ordered hits on both he and his son, and falsely claimed that he was a rat. He offered his opinion of Vic and Gas. They had no training, no honor. All they want to do is kill and kill. Get what you can, even if you didn't earn it, without beating a dead horse. I've repeatedly mentioned the Lucchese's history were falsely labeling its members and ordering their deaths. During the Jersey trial and following the acquittals, bad blood began to develop between Asatoro and the Tassetas. In late 1988, the entire Jersey crew was summoned to a meeting in Brooklyn by Vic and Gas. The overall plan was to kill all of them. Fearing for their lives, none of the crew showed up and they all went into hiding. Over time, they gravitated their way back to the family. However, they were told that Asatoro was considered an outlaw and needed to be killed, which was music to the Tassetas' ears. Vic and Gas even sent the hit team down to Florida where Asatoro had a house, but he was incarcerated in New Jersey for refusing to testify. Think about that for a moment. The Lucchese bosses put a rat wire on the guy, and he's sitting in the can for refusing to testify. I hope all the young men out there who are enthralled by the mob are listening to this. Let me quickly mention the super thanks icon, which can be found under the video by clicking on the three dot drop down. Put there to show appreciation for videos like this, and thank you. In 1992, Asatoro, the Tassetas, Michael Perna, and Thomas Riccardi were indicted on a racketeering case. Ultimately, Asatoro and Riccardi would cooperate following the trial. Prosecutors claim Asatoro provided a wealth of information, which obviously had a devastating effect for the Lucchese family. At the end of the article, Asatoro explained that he wanted to warn potential mafia recruits the following, that the organization is no longer an honored secret society. There is no glamour like in the movies, and most of the families are becoming street gangs. Either you wind up in the can, you're finished like me or dead. And before I end this, I want to second that.